how does the word of God come back to him? It comes back to him when we speak. It does not go back to him void. Now this word is going to come to you. You're going to receive this word. And when you receive the word, you meditate on it. You ponder on it until it is so full in you. And then you can speak it back and it goes back to him. It goes back to him. And it will not go back to him void. Because if it has, it has roots, it has born roots in you, then it is not going back void. It is not going back empty. It is going back full of life. So many times people have spoken the word, but they've spoken it empty. It is not full of, it is void. They've spoken it, it has not yet got the roots in them. Like we were talking yesterday about the oak trees, how they bear so deep roots that the more time you take in the word of God, because the word of God is, uh, it's a, uh, it's alive. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. It's a... Uh, the Pharisees read it, but it did not bear roots in them. And they didn't see any results of the word. Yet they knew it. They could memorize it. Paul knew it. Paul was a Pharisee. And you see, he said that Pharisees by the age of 12 had to know the entire Pentateuch. They could memorize the Pentateuch by the age of 12. Pharisees. First five books of the Bible, off head. Yet he was using the very word to persecute the Christians, to persecute the people of God. Until he encounters God. And when he encounters God, Galatians 1.15 says, When it pleased him who separated me from my mother's womb, to reveal his son in me. You notice that, not to me, in me. I immediately did not confer with flesh and blood. Neither did I join those that were apostles before me in Jerusalem but was led to Arabia. And it is believed that Paul was in Arabia for 14 years, a period of 14 years before he came back. So this very word he had known, these very scriptures he used to memorize as a Pharisee, now there had to be time for him to get this word to bear root, to have root in him. And when he came back, his words were not void. The same scriptures that he had, because he didn't get another Bible after he stopped being a Pharisee. Just like many of us, before you receive the Holy Ghost, before you're filled with the Holy Ghost, you have the same Gideon's Bible, and it is not doing anything good for you. Then you get filled with the Holy Spirit, and all of a sudden, the same Gideon's Bible is producing miracles. It's producing great results. The same Gideon's Bible. Praise the Lord. So the problem was not the Bible. The problem was not what was written. The problem was that it, it had not got root in you. It is just like maize. You can have maize grains. As if my wife knows where I'm going with this. <laughs> you are a prophet. That maize can wind up being githeri, and that's all. <laughs> but that same plate of githeri can be a full shamba somewhere. And you will have crop year after year, money after money. You feed people after that same plate. So if you put it on a plate and throw in some beans, it's not going to bear root. Praise the Lord. But if you go put it in some ground, it may require some patience. But every day you will water, you will add fertilizer, you will pull out the weeds, you will do everything. And one day you will be better than this one who had it on the plate. And as we take the word of God, we take it, we meditate on it, because the truth is that the word of God can never fail. Praise the Lord. God is not a liar. The truth is that we've tried to explain away the word of God using our circumstances or our situations. Let me tell you. That is why he tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, he tells us that our weapons of warfare are not carnal. They are mighty in the Lord, upon pulling down of strongholds and every imagination that exalts itself above knowledge of Christ, and they bring into captivity, yeah, they bring these thoughts into captivity to the obedience of Jesus Christ. Many of us as Christians don't see results because we've tried to adjust the word to our situations. We've tried to believe that sometimes it will not work because there's sometimes we didn't see results in our lives. And the more we do that, the more we, like, it will work. It will always work. It will always work. Like God has said, it will never go back to him void. If it is the word of God, it carries life. 
and it will never fail. His word will never fail. His word will never fail. Think about it. This is his word. He's exalted his word above his name. This is his word. It will never fail. It didn't fail any time in the Bible. And whenever you're starting to think that it is failing, that is an imagination and a thought trying to exalt itself above the knowledge of Jesus Christ. And it should be brought into captivity to the obedience of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. It should be brought into captivity. And when we start living a life where we know that his word will never fail, his word never fails, we start seeing great results in our lives. Because as we go to it, we know that we don't have any other option. Whenever Jesus spoke, he didn't expect any option. Because he said, whatever he spoke is what the Father spoke. He spoke the word of God. So there was no other otherwise. Hakuna otherwise ingine. Hakuna otherwise ingine. Praise the Lord. There was no other otherwise. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. Imagine they get this boy, the disciples come around him, they cast out demon, they cast out the demon, the demon refuses. When Jesus comes, he doesn't think it is different, he doesn't think it may be stronger, he, as in he just knows, I'm going to speak the word, so it's going to go. So he doesn't come and say, ah, I don't know what's wrong today, this one may be tough. No, he actually rebukes them of their unbelief, and he says, bring the boy to me. And even the people were amazed when he cast out demons. He said, by a word, he casts out demons. Because that word he was speaking was so powerful. And he marveled. There are two times, there are two times that he, he marveled in the Bible. And there are people he spoke about of great faith. They were not Jews. Yeah? They were not Jews. It was the lady, the, the lady who said that she was not the Shunammite woman. She said, even the dogs eat of the crumbs that fall off the table. And uh, it was the centurion who said, just pick a word and my daughter will be fine. Just pick. That man believed that and Jesus knew. Jesus didn't think, sometimes it may work or you may get home. If you find that it has not worked, just keep believing. Jesus didn't speak that way. You know, I've seen testimonies of, uh, uh, you know, Charles Ndifon has been in Kenya for the last like one month. Yeah, he was here in Kenya. He was in up country, Embu, where he went to a deaf school. The whole school was healed. Yeah, many of you saw that. You saw that online. Yeah, the whole school. And that is how Charles in the phone believes. You listen to Charles in the phone. Have you ever heard him say it will not work? No, he says it's going to work because what I'm speaking is the word of God. So why should such a man have so different results? And some of us have different results. Yet we read the same Bible. We read the same word of God. It is because he's taken the limitations off of God. He never comes thinking sometimes the word may not work. Every time he comes. And you see, it's not the first time he's emptying a school. He was in Cameroon, I think, a school of the blind. The whole school was healed. He was in, and you see, these are the things the media doesn't want to report. They are not news. But you see, it is just here in our neighborhood, a few miles away. A whole school. And many miracles were happening. He went to a hospital. The last time he came here, he went to, was it Kenyatta or wherever he went? And he went to the dialysis ward or the dialysis place. And everyone was healed who was inside there. How has he gone to such a level? He's setting a pace. And that is why he says that we should follow, we should emulate those who by faith have obtained the promises. Instead of me as a pastor, me as a believer, instead of following someone who is giving excuses and telling me, oh, sometimes the healing will not happen, other times, no, 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 that one has not obtained the promises by faith. I'm going to emulate these ones who have obtained. I'm going to emulate this one who challenges me to believe the word of God better. Because it works. It works. Yeah? I've told us to read God's generals, but if you've watched God's generals, you've watched people like A.A. Allen, you've watched all these... These guys danced before they prayed for the sick. They spoke in a way that they were... You see, Alan, they brought a man with cancer of the stomach. This man had not eaten his eating 21 days and he's there on a stretcher. And then Alan is speaking and he's like, I would rather be in a physical prison than being in a prison of that stretcher. You know, which some would call insensitive. But it's because he knew that this man is not going back that way. <laughs> he says, look at him. He's lost all his weight. Look, look at him. That's a bad prison. You see? Then he got him off. And when he got him off, he didn't tell him walk. He told him run. 
and he brought a packet of milk and whatever and told him eat and you know he had not eaten anything during that time whatever they would try to give him would come out and it is cause these people took the word of God meditated on the word of God believed the word of God in this year if we're going to bear fruit like God has spoken this is a, there is something that God was speaking to me today uh, he was giving me an example of uh, in a corporate in the corporate world you in a an organization do you know that many times there are people who are laid off in an organization you know why they are being laid off not that they are bad people because they've not grown do you know that yeah you've worked there for 20 years things have changed you worked there when people are still using typewriters computers came ipads came you didn't educate yourself to be up to par you get what i mean yeah, so eventually you're laid off you're not you're not adjusting you're not evolving as a company you're very good you've not declined in your performance but your performance is not very needed at this level and there are many children of god especially during this time as we're going to bear fruit during this time that god has said you know god has said god told us from two years ago this year is going to be i have like real explosion in this ministry real explosion no wonder we are having 21 days of meeting every day we've never had such we've never had such a time of meeting like a number of days like this the longest we've met consecutively maybe has been four days or three days during maybe like conference or, or camp yeah like like yeah our anniversary like four days that has been the longest but now we are meeting for 21 days and the truth is that there are those who have not adjusted to be able to keep up with these things and they will be laid off they are not bad christians their competence has not gone down it has just not gone up it is required to go up if we are going to bear fruit it is required to go up praise the lord even in animals when you're breeding animals the animals you will take out not because they are bad animals but you see you've got better breeds they're producing better this is no longer relevant and you take them out hallelujah let us not be those that are laid off let's take the word of god and have results because it is going to be too good when you realize that every week everyone is coming with crutches of people who walked everyone is coming with contact lenses coming with like people have been healed and everyone is coming and you are still there india bana india india bana india sababu mungu umema cheze ya bana you know you are still stuck there it's good cheze ya bana but cheze ya bana don't play him dance for him praise the lord <laughs> yeah as you take the word of god you take in the word of god that the word of god upgrades us you you, you get what i mean it, it it upgrades us if it 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 is it it, it should it's like a self updating software you get it every other time it updates itself and upgrades itself it updates itself and upgrades itself so the more we keep in the word of god and that's why these examples i'm giving you i'm giving you the example of charles and defon He's not begun ministry today. He's been in ministry for over 30 years. Praise the Lord. He's not grown cold. He's just gone high. The word in him and him keeping believing that word of God has kept bearing results and more fruit. And God wants us to bear fruit. If we are going to bear fruit, we should and what fasting helps us actually is to get our lives out of his way because many times our life is mad with funny experiences we are saying jesus lover of my soul you've taken me from the miry clay many christians still seem to be in the miry clay you get it because you have issues something hits you this side another thing hits you the other side another thing hits you the other side until you become the standard and the word of god goes down is i also used to believe until it happened to me who said it happening to you change the word of god the word of god did not change Praise the Lord. Who say that Elisha as a man of God dying of sickness meant God condoned sickness? You you get what I mean? It, it didn't change anything. Actually the anointing was still there and when a, a dead man was thrown on his bones came back to life. That was showing us God. It was showing us that yeah this is still God's will. Praise the Lord. Raising of the dead part inside a man who died of sickness. 
that it was still there, tangible. <laughs> because by the time they are throwing on his bones, it means he's decayed, decomposed its bones that are left. But still the power was there. And many of us as children of God, like I was telling us yesterday, when we were given the spirit, the spirit that he gave to us, the new spirit that he gave to us, the new spirit carries everything. Everything that we ever need is embedded in there. Praise the Lord. We should not be like Elisha. Let's not be buried with that power only to raise other dead. Hallelujah. It is in there. This word of God. And uh, many of you who are, who are doing the the, the Bible challenge, yeah. Today, today we are reading John chapter 8, yeah. And I want to look at John chapter 8, verse 31 to 32. 31 to 32. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then ye are. If you continue in my word, another version says, if you abide in my word, then you are my disciples indeed. Who are disciples? Disciples are the ones who take on the discipline of the master. The word disciple comes from the word discipline, or vice versa. I don't know which one. It's like the egg and the chicken. But the same root word, they have the same root word, disciple and discipline. So a disciple is the one who has taken on the discipline. So Jesus is saying, the only way you can be disciples unto me is when you take on when you abide in my word. Praise the Lord. So you can be a Christian but not a disciple. Because if you're not abiding in his word, you're not a disciple. That is what he's saying. It is just like, 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 like uh, you know many of us say, I'm born again, so I'm no longer under the law. No. You can be born again and still be under the law. I should not even go there. I think I'll talk about that on Sunday. <laughs> Sunday is tomorrow. Yeah. But he says that they that are led by the Spirit. You get what I mean? Yeah, they're the sons of God. And he says, you see, if you continue, if you if you if you're led by if you if you're led by the Spirit, it is you who is not under the law. Praise the Lord. And sin shall not have dominion over you. You who is being led by the Spirit, you who is following God, you who is living out of the Spirit. So every time we see like sin in our life, we know that we were under the law. Because he says, I'm not under the law, I'm under grace, so sin shall not have dominion over me. So whenever it hits us, you know, I was under the law. Because his grace never fails. He says that his word of grace has come to all, teaching them to deny all ungodliness. Praise the Lord. It has power. So wherever you fail, you just know that in that area, I, I submitted to the law. I depended on human ability. I depended on my strength, and that is what, because his ability never, never fails. He never fails. Praise the Lord. Yeah. So, not every Christian is necessarily not under the law. It is true we are in a dispensation that is of grace. We are no longer in the law dispensation. But you can be under that dispensation. Hallelujah. So, even here he's saying, it is not obvious. If his word is not abiding in you, then you're not his disciple. On earth he had followers and he had disciples. Some of the followers were not necessarily disciples. Disciples take on the discipline of the master and they do that discipline of the master. So if many times if we change what we believe because of what we experience, we are no longer disciples. The word of God has to have the highest place in our lives that no matter what we experience, your experience, our experiences have never been that important. And the devil will always use your experience he will always use your experience to weaken you in the word of God. The devil will always use your experience. He will always show you. And all the great people of faith that we read about, the giants we read about, the revivalists that we read about, you will realize that one thing that helps them, they go to realize the place of the word and the place of their experience. That is why A.A. Allen with his knee problems he would still stand up there and see great healings. He would never tell anyone, sometimes God will not heal because even me, I'm struggling with my knee problems. He would stand up there and call up people with arthritis, with what? With his knee problems. Praise the Lord. 
Because in this experience doesn't change the word of God. The word of God is this, and I'll cling to the word of God. Hallelujah. I'll stick to it. Yeah, let's go back. Verse 31. He says, Then you shall be my dis- then are ye my disciples indeed. Then verse 32. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Now, many times we start from there, but you see, this is in grammar, you don't start a, a, a sentence with and. Praise the Lord. That means that you have to first read where it is coming from. He's saying, and you shall know the truth. So sometimes actually people will even just say, you shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. No. So how shall you know this truth? He's saying, if his word abides in you. Yeah. Let's read in NLT from verse 8. Jesus said to the people who believed in him. You see, they already believed in him. You are truly my disciples if you remain faithful to my teachings. They believed in him. But to be true disciples, they had to remain in his teachings. And you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Praise the Lord. And you will know the truth, and that truth will set you free. So sometimes we are speaking a truth that we do not know, and we wonder why it does not set us free. It is only the truth that you know that will set you free. You know, it's easy for you to speak something you don't know. Hasn't this COVID time showed us? Haven't all of us spoken things we don't know? <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Yeah, all of a sudden, politicians have become more knowledgeable about immunology than the immunologists. Then, you know, as in, you get what I mean? Yeah. A doctor's temperature is taken by a security guard. <laughs> Hallelujah. Things have just changed during this time. <laughs> there is a lot that we speak, but we don't know. We can't say, oh, this corona. No, 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 no. It is like this. It is like this. Then the other day, it's, we again hear it is like this. Then the other day, we, oh, the other day we are saying, no, it is not real. It is not there. Then the other day, we are like, oh, somebody here has it. Oh, as in there has just been a lot. So we realize that you can speak a lot of truth that you don't know. Praise the Lord. Some things were true, but we didn't know them. <laughs> Hallelujah. And it's the same thing. There are many children of God who speak the word of God, but they don't know it. But he's saying that when we abide in his teachings, when we continue in his teachings, then we shall know the truth and it will set us free. When we continue in his teachings, Paul continued in his teachings when he went to Arabia. And when he showed up, he was a free man. He was afraid. Because you see, you'd think as long as you're born again, you're meant to walk in freedom every day of your life. Sadly, many don't. Legally, it is there for them. Freedom was given for them. And I've always talked about this. It is just like, actually, the original does not say set free. It says make free. Praise the Lord. You know, somebody can be set free and they will not. If, 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 if uh, you see like, baby elephants when they want these people who domesticate baby elephants like in India and many of these other countries we should get church land so that we also get some elephants so they, 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 they get you know they get a small stone maybe a brick and they tie onto its leg as a baby elephant and it just eats around there because when it tries to pull it feels the weight so it eats around there so until that elephant grows and it is an adult, they, they, when they reach home, they are from moving there from the market, they put a brick on it and it will stay there the whole day. You get what I mean? An adult elephant, as in it can walk and not even feel that there is a stone, there is a stone tied, that brick. But you see it was conditioned that way. You get what I mean? So, if... You just leave that rope on, you just leave that brick on, even if you release it and tell it you're free. It will not go, because it's not set free. Growing up, we reared chicken. Praise the Lord. And you see some chicken, if we were given chicken, we used to do free range. So if we are given chicken, uh, a new chicken would, would not know to come back if you release them to go in free range. <laughs> yeah, some church members are like chicken, free range. Yeah, they don't know to come back. They just come to Ngara and they can't remember where the church is. A year later, they're like, Pastor, I'm still coming back. But so, so this chicken would be tied. You put a, a thread on its leg or whatever you put and put it next to a pole, a tree, and leave it there three days. When you release it 
you set it free, you remove that cord on the fourth day, it just eats around that pole. It eats around that pole. It is set free, but it is not made free. Praise the Lord. So if you go for a prisoner, you can open the gate of the prison. You've, made, you've set them free. But you see, they may stay there because of the mentality. This is what we are used to. This is where we have been. How shall life be out there? I, I don't want, and many Christians are that way. What if I believe and I get disappointed? They've been so much in prison. They fear to believe. They fear to dare to believe. There's life out there. We've been set free. Like, oh, the other time I believed, but it didn't work. I fear to believe again. Oh, the word of God. Ah, even so and so believed it and it did not work. Even so and so believed it. So they are there. But he's saying when you know the truth, now the truth will show you what is out there. You will not only be set free, it makes you free. You walk out of that prison. You kick that door open and you walk out. And you go and enjoy what God has for you, the fullness of what he has for you. And if this year, if we are going to, if we are going to explode and see the greatness of what God has spoken, we are going to be very daring people. Our faith needs to be up there. And that can only come by how serious we take the word of God. The truth is that church can be a circus. Hallelujah. Yeah. We can come to church and we entertain ourselves. We can come and sing. We can come and dance. We can speak in tongues. We can jump around. And yet there is no fruit in our lives. That is very possible. And it has happened to many people. But it is the one who takes the word of God and takes the teachings of Jesus, like he said, abides in them. He is the one that is going to bear fruit. He is the one that is going to be the disciple. And no wonder these guys were that way. Because you see, it is in Antioch that they first called them Christians. They were disciples. They are not the ones who called themselves Christians. People just saw them and they are like, these are Christ-like. The things they do. They are just doing things. And it was not a cool word at that time because relating up, being like Christ was a reproach. You are funny. Yeah. You are going around healing people, healing blind people. You are too much. We don't know which part you operate by. Now these guys were that way. And they looked at them and they are like, these are Christians. They said, these that have turned the world upside down have come here also. They didn't need to announce. Praise the Lord. There are things that you will not need to announce in your family if the word of God is at work in you. There are things you will not need to announce. There are things that will just be seen in your life as people come. As we do an akazo. these people that we are getting out there and come here, join us, will they be disappointed after they know you after a week? You get what I mean? They realize that actually you don't really believe the word like I thought you do. That day when you came to me, you were, now you're seriously shaken. What of the word? What of this that you believe? Praise the Lord. What of the word that you believe? So as we take in the word, we ponder on the word, we take it like Mary, meditate on it, think about it, spend hours. This Bible challenge that we are on, it is very, okay, so far it's very simple. You get what I mean? Like three chapters are there. Like, it's, it's very simple so far. Meditate on those, read those three chapters a day and meditate on them the whole day. Think about these things as you, you throughout the day. Let it occupy your mind. You're going to realize that at first it works in you, then it will have results outside. Because you see, he normal, that's what he normally wants. Christianity is inside out, it's not the other way around. So many times he wants to first work in you. When the Holy Ghost came upon Jesus, he led him away from people, he led him to the wilderness to fast and to be tempted. Why? Because him being tempted proved what was on the inside. That was for him. It was not for other people. And then now he could come and give to these other people. As we meditate in the word of God, we realize that we are the ones that are first changed from the inside out. You realize that your life becomes different. You love, you see, it's easy to come and pray when we're in church. Do you pray at home? Yeah. Do the people who live around you, can they testify that you are a prayerful person? Have they ever seen you read the Bible? You, you get what I mean? Because it first changes you. And this is a good discipline that we, we are having. Imagine every day, three chapters. Let people see you. Let your children see you. Let your spouse see you. Let your siblings see you. Let your parents see you. 
I see this person values the word. They wake up in the morning and they open the Bible. They take the Bible. We are hearing them pray. Because see, the more you get in his word, the sweeter it becomes. The sweeter it becomes. You get addicted to it. Yeah? There's a gospel reggae dancehall artist called uh, DJ Nico. Huh? DJ Nicholas, DJ. He's from he's from Jamaica, if you know. He has he has good t-shirts. His t-shirts are uh, they have what be a Bible addict, yeah. Bible addict. He has very nice t-shirts. And he speaks the word. I wish I could get a video and you hear him read King James in Pato. Yeah. In in hey, you know, you hear him preaching and you're like, hey, what is this you're speaking? Hmm? And so to You see, you don't even understand it already. Hmm? But you see, these are people that have taken the word of God and you can see fruit. Because you know, you would think the world that they are coming from, change would take forever. Because that is what the world has. We've been made to believe this. And that is what I'm saying, that we've taken experiences and, we, and that is why I'm saying that this year we are going to see many addicts set free here. Praise it. Because I realize that the church is losing sight of the wonder-working power of God. Praise the Lord. It is a testimony that somebody got set free gradually. It is a testimony that somebody went through rehabilitation and got set free. It is a testimony. Hallelujah. But you see, it is not the only testimony. So many times we take, you know, the church has taken that direction. We go into that, go into that until we lose a certain truth. It is just like one of the prophecies that one of the things that God spoke to Kenneth Hagin when Kenneth Hagin started doing Holy Ghost meetings. Many of you have watched his Holy Ghost meetings. Just meetings where you would see people laughing, running like crazy. He's prophesying and laying hands. He said, and he started doing this in his later years in ministry. He said, if we don't have these meetings, there is a truth about the baptism of the Holy Spirit that a whole generation will lose. And I'm so glad he did that. Because some of us are here today. Because we watched those videos. We were impacted. And many people have written off of that. So, so you see, so we come and we... How many churches do you know even here in Nairobi? They are not against speaking in tongues. They believe in speaking in tongues. You hear people speak in tongues. But they never pray for anyone to speak in tongues. It's just a matter of time. That fact is that truth is going to be lost in that church. It's just a matter of time. Yeah. They come, the pastor speaks it. No one talks about it, but they do it. You get what I mean? If it is not taught, it is a matter of time. It is going to be lost. It is going to be lost. So now as we talk about mental health and we talk about what as the church our main emphasis has gone on counseling more than the power of God. And having the testimony is reduced. How many Look at the days of Apostle Jokayo, Murima, Tia Luzbun, when they came here. How many people were mad that got free? How many people got free from drugs? Testimony. Jokayo himself, he was dying in hospital. He was an addict to liquor and smoking. His lungs, his kidney, I mean his liver, had been affected and he's left to die. He was set free in an instant. Praise the Lord. He didn't go through rehabilitation. He didn't go. Is it wrong to go through rehabilitation? No. Praise the Lord. God uses many ways. Let's emphasize all of them. Hallelujah. Otherwise, if we keep emphasizing one, we are going to lose the other one. So we are going to see people come to us and we are, they, we are helpless. We, we can't help them. Because we've only believed someone comes and, oh, I, I, I want to stop drinking. And like, have you gone to rehabilitation? That's what pastors are asking. Lay hands on them. Rebuke that spirit. Praise the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. If it persists, set them for rehabilitation. But prepare people for this. This instant. And that is what I'm saying. That about these people, it is because they took the word. You know, when the word was preached in many third world countries, we didn't have a lot of options. So we saw great results. Now we are getting, most of us just listen to American preachers and what, and we are getting many options from there. You know, somebody's title is, uh, it's okay not to be okay. No, 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 no. 
I feel like it's good to say it's okay to acknowledge that you're not okay. You get what I mean? But it's not okay not to be okay. It's even oxymoron. It's like it's you're not okay. It's not okay not to be okay. Get help. If it's okay not to be okay, then don't look for help. Stay not okay. You get what I mean? So there is very good catchy language that we hear out there. You get it? Yeah, all of us have our problems. You know, you hear it over and over. And you're like, Jesus kept speaking about solutions. He kept speaking about solutions. He kept speaking about life. Today we speak about problems more. We, we help people embrace their problems. We help. And there is no fighter spirit in any Christian. When anything comes, they're like, oh, even Pastor so and so, I watched him on TV and he said that. Even him, he struggles. His opening remarks are, all of us have our struggles. That is not what we want to hear. We've come to hear the word of God, not your struggles. Yeah, we're not saying those struggles are not there. Praise the Lord. But they are not the ones that we came to listen to. Whenever Jesus came to preach, he preached the word of God. He didn't come and preach to them how he struggled to pray in the Garden of Gethsemane. That was not his preaching. When he resurrected, he didn't tell them, hey, I almost lost it. No. You know, he, that is being real. He would have been real to them. Yeah, three times. Yeah, I was sweating, sweating blood. Because you see, we elevate the things that are of the world, the things that are not in the word of God. We give them, and you see, the Bible says that in the last days, men will put up teachers who they want to listen to. Their itching ears want to listen. There are things that you speak and you're like, that's not the preacher I want. Imagine having Pastor Jesus. Come, oh, Jesus, I tried to rebuke a spirit out of my brother, but he was not. He will tell you, you faithless generation. Ha! That was Pastor Jesus. These guys feel a storm is tossing their boat and he's sleeping. And you think he's going to wake up and, hey, my bad, my bad. I was very tired, you know, last night, that Kesha. Hey, sorry, sorry, sorry. I, I overslept. I should have been here helping you to do it. No, he says, you guys, how long shall I be with you? He rebukes them. That was Pastor Jesus. Very few congregants would want to listen to him today because he would be very insensitive. Hallelujah. Especially among those that were close to him. You know, you know levels. Yeah. You would see his pampering mainly with those who are afar. Woman caught in adultery. You know, you, you would see his pampering on these guys. But these who are in here, ah, get behind me, Satan. Did I? You know, he could not waste time with them. So just get behind me, Satan. You don't know what spirit you speak by. He's telling John and James. He's telling them he things, hard things. So the word of God has been watered down so much until we've developed our own traditions of which he says that you've made the word of God of none effect because of your traditions. That's how powerful our traditions are. So if the tradition is we don't believe anyone can get set free instantly, that tradition is going to totally. And you see that is how Christians are like, okay, if it is really possible, why do we never hear of it happening? You see, that, that, that does not erase the word of God. It does not remove it, that you never hear of it. No. The word remains with its power. So that you've never heard of it, maybe should make you long to, ha to hear of it. Or long to see it. That is how we are seeing all these other uh, healing movement and what all these moves of God that we've seen. And that is why we should, we, like, if as much as we can, let's study the moves of God. Especially that we know that we are pivoting the move that is the move that is brought upon Kenya, that we are pivoting this. Let's see how these people had to contend for these moves. People didn't settle for the status quo. Or Robert himself praying for sick people. He had prayed healing lines. You know, he's all over TV. They would even bring, there had to be somebody, an attorney used to be in his meetings. If you watch even some of his meetings, you'll see that. And he had to, to make an oath that the things that you're seeing are not staged or everything is as is. Yeah, to be on national TV because they were not sure. TV, healings had never been on TV, live. So they didn't know what to do. Is this drama? Is this pretense? So they were like, hey, this, is it legal? Is it... So he had to be there and, and swear. And doctors would be there and examine people. And people get healed. And he had seen a number of lines. And a lady comes and a lady comes. I've told you this testimony. A lady comes with the son, with the, 
the son whose pelvic bone had been removed. This is the pelvic bone it had been removed. And O Robert is tired. He doesn't feel the anointing. He comes in there like this son. And O Robert is like, eh, that I've never heard of such. You know, he's seen lame legs healed, blind eyes open, but he's like, a new born to be formed is like that. I can't, I don't have faith for that. I can't believe for that. I've never seen it. And the lady told him, we don't, we don't want you to, we don't want to believe. Yours is to pray. Me and the son will believe. Yeah. They had also never seen it, but they had meditated on the word of God. They had taken the word of God and they contended for something that they helped all Robert's ministry to start having creative miracles. Because after that, now creative miracles started. So just that they were not happening does not mean, it didn't mean that God was not willing. And they came and he, he laid hands, he was challenged. And they went home. And the next day when he's coming for the meeting, he saw a boy running on the stage. So he's wondering, who is that? It's like the boy who came yesterday didn't have a pelvic bone. He's there. And they followed this boy for over 40 years. If you go even to their website, you'll see pictures when he was hiking in mountains, when he joined university. They followed him from that young age to see how his healing was progressing. Until he grew, got married, they were following him. Something broke out because somebody had to contend for it. They had never seen it. They had never, but they had to contend for it. You remember the testimony of Bishop Benson Idahosa? He just read the Bible. Said, go raise the dead. Huh? He rode his bicycle and went to his pastor. Said, Pastor, is this is it this for pastors, prophets only? And the pastor told him, read it again. Said, no, it doesn't say it is, it doesn't, doesn't limit it to pastors or to anyone. And the pastor told him, yes, it's that. And he asked the pastor, you have you ever raised the dead? And the pastor told him, no, but the word of God says it. And he got his bicycle and started looking for the dead. It didn't need to be, we are hearing of it. No. Hearing comes by the word of God. Hear it from the word of God. Hear it from what God is saying. Praise the Lord. So there are many things that have died out that the early church in Kenya used to experience. Many things that have died out that we don't see today. We see a miracle in church and we are shocked. And I've always told you, we have people, someone has been in church for over 15 years and they've never seen a miracle. Not they've never done, they've never seen. That a blind person came to church and they left sin. And somebody has been born again for 15 years. I like, wouldn't Peter get a culture shock if he visited church? Because as if that is what made church during their time. That, that is what church was known for. And even the early days, that's how church came here. Still in the Pentecost, some of came here. That is how Apostle Jokau got born again. Of his deathbed, healed. And that is how Deliverance Church was born. Deliverance Church was born here. In Kariako. In uh, what? Social Hall. It's called Social Hall. Yeah. If you told the things that happened there. Because he had just come there. And he had meetings in the afternoons. People would come. Mad people. Lame people. And that's how that church was birthed. And you see, I grew up in Deliverance Church. Uganda. Praise the Lord. And there are many deliverance churches where there is even no deliverance. <laughs> Very far from the beginning. Praise the Lord. Like, yeah, like many, many. Today there are many deliverance churches where they don't even speak in tongues. They are a Pentecostal church. You get what I mean? That is not how it was birthed. Assemblies of God. How many assemblies of God churches do we have here? Assemblies of God was known in those years, actually. Assemblies of God was the, the one that carried the move of God. In the 1940s, 30s, Assemblies of God, full gospel. Those were the, you know, Baptist was the, the ones that didn't get into these things, manifestations. But if you wanted manifestations, go to Assemblies of God, go to full gospel. That is where you saw it. Today you just see full gospel and the gospel is not even half there. You know, you, you go and enter and yeah not all of them but many of them so you see our truth can be lost and we are not going to lose this truth I remember when we just began when Ratsi just began we prayed in tongues for long we would pray in tongues we were very few people praying in tongues most people who came didn't pray in tongues so there was a lot of whispering so those days I'm the one who used to lead prayers 
So most of the service would be laying hands on people to speak in tongues, to speak in tongues and gradually, one by one, eventually the church was roaring. I stopped leading prayers. I stopped laying hands on people and the other people started laying hands on people. And you see, a time comes where now we are comfortable. We have a number of people that speak in tongues. You know, we may forget. We may forget about it. And like, ah, now we are somewhere. But you see, God always reminds you, remember where you came from. Don't forget where you came from. Praise the Lord. These lights, these cameras, these screens are not the ones that have brought our growth. Yeah. We began without them. We didn't have a microphone. We didn't have lights. We didn't have a camera. We didn't have these seats. We had nothing. We didn't have a podium. You get what I mean? We didn't have any of those things. That is how we began. God does not want us to forget. What gave us that tenacity during that time? What gave us the confidence during that time? His power. We knew that we could pray. We knew that we could take his word. And we cannot lose sight of those two. Praise the Lord. We can make this place as beautiful as one. We can be up to date with, you know, we can be as contemporary as a church can be. But we're not going to stop speaking in tongues. We're not going to stop taking the word of God seriously. We know what that could do when we owned nothing. And if you take that away, we are just going to remain a shell. No power. Nothing. And it is very easy for all those truths to be lost. Talk to some of your parents who are born again and what? Some of you will even be shocked to know that they speak in tongues. Because the time they got born again, they really had experiences. But you see, they settled. They, are ch- they got a smith, smith who goes what said he doesn't want to be established. Praise the Lord. Yeah. You know, in uh, cake English, established means, it's what it would mean still today. Established means it can't move. Yeah. It says many Christians are established. So he says, oh, we, we want an established church. We don't want a church where people are running. Rakabaya, ba, 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 ba. Leko, ribo. No, 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 no. People should be established. People should maintain order. Stand still and say, Father, we love you. Look cool. We have dignitaries coming into the service. Don't act like unlearned. Hey. Hey. Don't sweat here. Yeah. Somebody said that crusades are not for today. You sweat, you spit. Yeah. And then we wonder why revival has tarried in Kenya. What God calls sacred, we are calling embarrassing. We don't want to identify with that. That is what? All moves of God were labeled that way. They thought that whoever was involved in the move of God. Because see, the move of God takes you way beyond the intellect. Way beyond human reasoning. Way beyond what humanity calls noble. It takes you beyond that. And it takes a lot of humility to have God flow through you. To have God use It takes a lot of humility. Praise the Lord. It takes a lot of humility for you to kneel and prostrate and worship God. It takes a lot of humility for you to cry before God. That is what happened to Paul. Don't you see Paul's former colleagues? They thought he was mad now. Because they're like, Paul, you're very studied. A Pharisee of the Pharisee. What is this that you're in? Going everywhere talking about this Nazarene. What, 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 what is this? And as the move of God comes, that is, it is going to be uncomfortable. There's going to be a lot. And that is why you see that when we take the word of God and believe it, sometimes we may be the only ones believing it. We may be the only ones believing it. We may be the only ones believing it. So revival has tarried in Kenya because of that. Because when it is about to happen, we become cool. Like, hey, not that much, not here. We're not a crazy church. You see, in our church, we don't have people falling around. We're not a crazy church. You are circle. You're registered under societies. You are society. <laughs> yeah. It is so true. Because what God calls sacred, you calling. But you see, like I'm saying, it starts with the individual life of you as a Christian. How many Christians don't read the Bible because they find it boring? What God has called sacred? What God has called for? You get it? I would rather watch movies the whole day than read my Bible. Is it? 
I, I would rather do this than listen to the word of God. My friend, you need a slap on your behind. Your behind may not hurt enough. See, you need it on your, yeah? You need a high five on your face. Very nice high five on your face. Praise the Lord. You need to wake up. Wake up and start getting to the things of God. I said yesterday, God will fill you with the Holy Spirit. He will save you, but he will never fill you with his word. Get your nose in the word. Take it, eat it, like you see people in the Bible are told to eat it. Eat the book. They ate the book. Yeah. Then it was like fire in their bosom. It burned in them. Start eating it. Because you, if you're thinking that one day you all of a sudden will feel like, I, 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 I want to read the word. Today I'm craving for the word. No. It is just like starting on drugs. It may not start as a craving. It just starts with curiosity. Eventually you can't help. You just, you're addicted. Like he's saying. So you start reading the Bible. You introduce yourself to it. Then eventually you'll become addicted. It will become sweeter than anything. If you're waiting for a date, it's going to become sweet. Then you start reading it. Oh. And the truth is that, from the first day, telling us that stability is in having the word of God. Many ministers, and you see this goes as a warning to me or as a real caution to me. Many powerful ministers who have gone down, it is because they lost the discipline of reading the word. Do you know that I can come here and preach for a month without reading the word? And demonstrate the power of God? And see everything happening? I know many scriptures right now. I preach a lot without sermons. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So it is very easy. But you see, I'll start dying gradually. Yeah. That is how, and like I was telling us, that is how we get into, you realize that certain habits are coming back, things you thought you had overcome. Normally when you see them coming back, just look, how is your relationship with the word of God? How is your relationship with the word of God? Many times. And many times, many times we've seen this, even when dealing with you, and dealing with ministers, when dealing with uh, just church members, so like, okay, I used to, uh, no, I, I just used to drink when I was in high school, and also how has it come back? You're going to realize that. They started giving leave to the word of God, giving leave to the word of God. I got back into pornography. I got back into this. You're going to realize that the word of God. And you see, the further you go from the word of God, the more you will detest it. There is no craving. So you just have to get a discipline. If the discipline means walking in the neighborhood while reading it, if that is how you're going to read it, you'll read it. We were listening to that. Many of you listened to the video, the videos that we shared for Jerry Saville and in a Copeland talking about the word of God. And he was talking about how he got in the word of God because he would say, he would wake up and say, let me go to the living room and read the word of God. And you see, when he opened his Bible to read the word of God, eventually he would wake up two hours later. <laughs> so he realizes, I just changed the room. I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't go to do anything. You get what I mean? He would go to pray and he just kneels down there and he realizes actually he just changed room. And he said, now I'm going to pray. How am I going to pray? He went on the bathtub, the edge of the bathtub. So if I fall, I'll hit my head. If I, yeah. He said he started praying from there. Praying from there. And he said a few, a few days later, he hears the flesh telling him, now you've mastered, you can now go to the room, you'll not sleep. He's like, oh flesh, I know your tricks. I'm here. <laughs> And he prayed until he was so sure he loved praying. He would just wake up praying. And now he knew he could go in any room and even pray for the whole night without. That is discipline. Eventually he started loving it. The Bible says in, 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 in Hebrews chapter 12 verse 11, it says that in the beginning, discipline is not fun. In the beginning, discipline is not easy. But he says it is the well-trained that enjoy a mature relationship with God. They are trained. So if during this fasting, one of the things you should learn if you've not been keen on it is reading the word of God. I think I've emphasized that enough this week. Get in the word of God. Tune in. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. People are watching online and what? If you're not here, tune in. Watch online. Be there. Listen to the word of God. Go back and read it. When people, when, when they're not in church, they, they are not going to watch. They have a good excuse as not in church. They are not. You should, this, is your, this is your life. Then you're keen to eat food that you don't want to miss any breakfast. You don't want to miss any... Yeah. 
Yeah, it is kept for you even call. <laughs> uh, keep for me supper, I'm coming back. Keep for me this, I'm coming back. No, we should treasure the word of God more than we treasure any of those things because the truth is that the word of God is more important than any of those things. And the truth is that some of the struggles we have in life are just a word issue. You don't need any deliverance. You don't need any hand laid on you. Just start taking the word of God. He says in Psalm 119 that he says that the entrance of thy word bringeth light. Praise the Lord. And in John he says that darkness cannot comprehend the light. Darkness cannot stand the light. So there are things that live, there are demons that live, there are operations that live, there are habits that live without screaming, without shaking, just because a greater light came in and darkness cannot comprehend the light. That you listen to the word, listen to the word. A testimony, Kenneth, Kenneth, Kenneth Copeland was a chain smoker. He started very early. By the age of nine he was smoking everything that could be smoked. Praise the Lord. Everything that could be smoked. Talk about it. Tobacco, pots, whatever tree bucks were there. He was smoking by the age of nine. He got born again, got filled with the Holy Spirit, and he still struggled. He used to wonder, ah, this smoking. How do I, like he used to go, and how do I stop smoking? How do I? So one time, I mean, he used to play, he used to, 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 to play music. He used to, he was a secular artist, then he used to also sing as, yeah. He even, he even had a record that sold it, as a secular artist in, uh, what, 1950s or what? He was on some billboards. Then he got, so in, so a certain minister called him and said, we are going for a conference for three weeks. Come, let's go, you will sing for me. And he went, so he went, he has his cigarettes up on the dashboard. So they got into the meeting, he just hanging around these ministers, he hears them share the word in. He's just like, what? Then one of the ministers says, do you know many people get set free, they get delivered and they even never know it? Because as the word gets in them, and, you know, the things, you, you know, he's in an environment that has just caused him to meditate on the word of God, to just think about that. Like every day he cannot believe what he's hearing. You know, that we have camp, you know, you wake up in the morning, you're hearing the word. You go for breakfast and you're just thinking about what. You go for lunch and it is just that environment of the word. So after the three weeks, he drives. Then as he's driving, he's driving always things start falling on his hands. So he's wondering, what is that? So he pulls up, it is his cigarettes. They had dried and the tobacco was falling out. He's like, what? Three weeks. I've not touched them. You know, initially he thought he would die if he didn't smoke in a day. He would do more than a packet. And so he would, he was like, what? They said, let me throw them away. But he's like, what if I need them? She said, let me keep them here. If I'm free, I'm free. <laughs> And you know, they just kept falling out, falling out until, and from that time he's never smoked again. Praise the Lord, like that. And then, the last thing was eating. He had drill eating disorder. Even when he served in the military, somebody had to supervise him. He used to hide chocolate candies under his, in his bunker. He used to hide them under. He would wake up and eat. When he was a young child, he used to eat a full loaf alone. He would get a loaf, open it, and put butter in, and he eats it. So whenever he was sent to the bakery to go buy, he would eat one, then carries one home. And meat pies, he used to buy meat pies. And one time that, 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 that bakery closed, and the guy, the baker who used to be there, used to make the meat pies and what? The parents hired him as the home chef. He's like, oh my God. He played American football, so it helped. He had weight, but not, not, not so much, but he was overweight. He played American football. Being active, you know, helped him to. But it was a real big issue. You know, right now it can seem a laughing matter, but it was hard for him. He cried about it. It was So when God told him, God told him, I want, I, this, I want you to deal with something. And God told him the food issue. He said he cried like a baby. He said, God, yeah? I, I gave up drinking. I gave up smoking. But now eating, I'm going to die. <laughs> Says, I'll die. And God told him, no, I've, I've not said that. I've not said that you should stop eating. <laughs> I just want discipline in that area. 
And you see, because of meditating in the word of God, he beat, as in he beat all these things that he had never been in any rehabilitation. He beat all these things. Listen to Joyce Meyer. She did Bible studies and you see she would be smoking. Then she has to air out, spray the air freshener before the Bible study group comes. How was she set free? The word of God. And I've seen that over and over. Even in this ministry, many people have been set free from various things. Many of them even fear to testify. It will come back if you don't come and testify. You better come and testify. But you see, people have been seated and you don't know. The desire just there is because you love the word of God. You esteem the word of God. It substitutes it. That light comes in and it, it, you know, it's the same. It's just, I remember like when I was in high school, there's a time I stopped watching movies for a very long time. Even until I think I met my wife and what. I started watching movies recently. I never, like, I thought, like I was in high school and God told me to stop watching movies. And I, I thought every Christian is not meant to watch movies at that time. But you see, like I just love my relationship with God. And I loved movies. You know, when I love something, whoever knows me, if I love something, I'm passionate till the end. So if I watched a movie, I didn't just watch the movie. I went to see how much it has sold. You know, like, you, you, you get what I mean? Yeah. So the last one, that the characters, yeah, I know, yeah, they are families, so I know, yeah, this, I look. So the cast, like, I pause the cast, I look, I Google, I pause, I like... As in when I get into something I fully love. So I love movies. Like I would not eat, not like no I could lock myself in a house and finish a series. Yeah, fasting. Yeah, I would fast to just receive the word from Hollywood. And yeah, like that's how it was. And the same thing with football. So the same time God told me to give a break to these two things. First it was the movies, then football. And then I wondered how is but you see, when I said yes to God, and I knew that instead of, because I remember we were going to watch a movie, it was a weekend, as with Pastor Outin. So we are going to watch a movie, and Pastor Outin had just got born again and led him to Christ. And this is when God had told me. So Pastor Outin, he tells me, ah, Benjamin, these movies, all of them have this sexual scene, and what? Uh, they, like, I just feel like they take me backwards, and what? Why don't we just go and read the Bible? You get what I mean? So, like, I, I feel like God had just made it so easy for me. He just brought somebody to, you know, like how the Bible says two are better than one. Like, like it was like real support had been given to me because I had still fallen for it. And he comes and we go, study the word, study the word. We had a small book we were using, I think it was by Scripture Union, you know, Bearing Fruit. So we, we, we read, we, 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 yeah, Bearing Fruit, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it was called bearing fruit. So we start reading, we read every day, and I'm telling you the word became sweet. We wake up in the morning, we'll be opening our Gideons and what? Then I realized that I wasn't interested in movies at all, at all. Even when I visit people and they are playing movies, and I, I just feel like just walking up. Like there's no desire. Why? Because the word had taken over that place. The word had taken. It, it's just like even people breaking addiction, even in psychology, it works by substitution. You get it? There are those receptors in the brain that, that are for that are for what? A reward. You see, when you're, you're, you're craving something, then you do it. it. It's like you've given yourself a reward. So the brain is like, yeah, you've been rewarded. So now they normally tell you now, don't reward the brain when it wants to be rewarded with that. You get what I mean? So some addictions, they will say either you inflict pain or do something that is that you don't like to do. So that now the brain starts realizing that if I desire that, I'm not rewarded, I'm punished. So you see the brain starts configuring itself not to like that. Now imagine when we take the word of God, all those cravings, that is why he told this lady, if you drink of me, you will receive water and you will fast no more. Because this lady had gone to every one man, two, three, four, five, and she thought the men were the problem. Five husbands. This one doesn't have enough money. This one is not. This one is not so good. This one is not tall enough. This one is not dark chocolate. This one is not. You know, just she just thought the men were the issues. And Jesus said, "What you are fasting for?" So whatever he thought movies were giving me that I would see, and until I felt I can, you know, imagine I'm in high school. You're in high school. How you have restrictions? 
But you see, they on the phone browsing. I had a Motoreza. And you see, that time you browse with a Opera Mini. You know, you, you move that cursor very slowly, letter by letter. Then, you know, you, the letters are on the numbers. So you have to, you know, to get the number. Then you're there just trying. Some there under the desk trying Hancock. Uh, when is the release date? When is it premiering? Then I'm in school. I'm like, wow, when can I get out of school to watch this movie? How do I get it? Okay. Then I had a friend who used to go out every weekend. So I'm like, can you bring us this movie? Can you? Then you know there were MP4 players. Then there are MP4 players, touch screen, before there are smart screens. Some people don't know. Yeah, there are MP4 players. So at first there are MP3 players. So that time some students had brought MP4 players. But finally, you're sitting there watching a movie. What was I longing for? What was I craving for? And you see, some of you, that is it. I know I'm speaking to somebody. That addiction to movies is going to be broken during this fast. Yeah, get set free. Movies are not bad. But if they own you right now, yeah, you're losing your life. You're losing time. You're losing time. Soaps. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. They, 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 these are things, and I'm telling you, the day you give them up for God, you're never going to regret. You're going to be like, wow, I've been missing this kind of life. I've been missing this kind of life. This is the life that God had for me, a life of freedom. That you can get home and talk to people. You get what I mean? That you can notice the changes on people. Yeah. How many husbands don't know their wives have changed their hairstyle because they are watching movies? Yeah. They don't know what is happening with their children. Yeah, it is true. You see, I'm telling you this, but you see, we deal with, with married people. At times, it is this. This is the issue. People get to their home and their children hate their dad. The wife doesn't like the dad. Or even friends with people at home and every time they come at home they are just in their room on the computer. They are just it just takes your time. It sucks life out of you and it kills your productivity. You wasted years. You are daydreaming. You're at work, you're not as efficient as you should be. So some of you are just going to have to delete Netflix, you're going to totally get rid of all things. You get what I mean? And I'm not saying they are evil. You get what I mean? Just like anything, food is not evil. You get it? They are not evil. But if they are the ones, if they become your master, during this time, give yourself to the word of God and see the miracle of the word of God. It will be a very wonderful substitute. A dangerous substitute. The word of God will become sweet. You will be longing to hear the word of God. You will be longing every, even when you go to YouTube, you're just looking for where the word is being taught. You are listening to sermons. You, you know, you're just excited to just hear the word of God. It, it just, something leaps on the inside of you and you will see the productivity in you. And look, you know, look at even many people who have taken the word of God seriously, who are not necessarily preachers. Look at their lives. You know what I mean? Look at Strive Masio. How long will Strive Masio speak without speaking the word of God? Praise the Lord. Many of you have heard of Tim Tebow. You know Tim Tebow? Yeah? yeah? I think fast to cross from two professional, you know, professional NFL player, American football player, crossing to baseball at that level. As in, he's just done great things. But if you see how the man values the word of God. Have you heard of the Benham brothers? If you've not heard of the Benham brothers, Google the Benham brothers. Two twins, they were playing baseball. They are also professional players. So full of the word of God. Actually, they are behind, if you've seen Bible B, the Bible B, whatever, uh, for kids, for competitions, you'll always see they are seated there, those twin guys who are seated there. Those guys are full of that. They are not necessarily, I'm a preacher, a pastor, but their parents taught them the word of God. They took the word of God. And they can't fail in life. They have good success. They had a reality show because they're into real estate as business. And because they were branded homophobes, was it ABC or those TVs they were on? They all pulled them down, canceled their contracts. They thought they were going to suffocate them in poverty. Praise the Lord. 
their name grew big. As in, you know, you look at this man, you're like, indeed, this man who delights in the law of the word of the Lord and meditates there in their night, whatever he touches shall prosper. Because this guy, imagine from being great American baseball players, being great in the on reality TV, being great now in whatever they are doing, like they just kept going. Look at people that know the word of God. Look at people that know the word of God. Look at many. Look at Dave Ramsey. How many of you have worked Dave Ramsey? Money make over how many? This is just, he's a financial guru, but that guy knows the word, and the word of God changed him. He's helped thousands of people get debt free. You know, recent when his his principles of how his if you read Dave, Dave Ramsey's baby steps of how to get debt free. You know, many secular, because he's a Christian, you know, definitely the left, the secular world has attacked him a lot. You know, his methods were so disapproved by many people. They came against them, financial scholars, professors, and what, and they went and studied them. They were studied in Harvard, and they're like, actually, they were. He's not a financial professor. He has the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost downloaded. You see him preach in a church and you may think he's a pastor by calling. His number one calling is you see him preaching. He's preaching in many of these churches. He's getting people debt free. He has things that work. The bonuses, last year but one, all his employees, Christmas bonus was $1,000. Even the Jonit. He has over 1,000 employees. All $1,000 per employee. How many corporations are doing that? You get what I mean? Full of the word of God, you will be the best up there. The word of God. This is the word that is able to build you and give you an inheritance among us them that are sanctified. You take in the word of God, your gloom will go away. I'm telling you, whoever is taking in the word of God, there is a joyfulness about them. There is a cheer that you see on their face every time. There is a warmth that they just have. They are like that tree planted by the water side. Praise the Lord. They, they are happy. Why? Because you have made God your source. You've made God your satisfaction. You've made God your all in all. It is him. He's become that. The Samaritan lady was sad. She comes to the well alone when there is no one coming to the well. Why? Because she was a reproach. She didn't want them in groups saying, oh, you know, she also married my brother. <laughs> Even me. All of us, she, oh, so we are all sisters in law. She didn't want to hear people speaking that besides... She didn't want to hear such stories. Sad. I'm sure she could not even open her mouth to speak when these people were speaking. Very inferior. And yet when Jesus started speaking his words to her, life started coming to her. She's like, I perceive you are a prophet. First of all, are you greater than our father? Jacob, who builds this well? Are you a prophet? Are you... And she left everything and ran to the very people she feared to stand before. And she told them, come see the Messiah. She brought the whole village. She forgot about her inferiority. She realized they were no longer the problem. The problem was with her. Many times when we suffer inferiority, low self-esteem, it is because we've not drunk from that well of life. We've not drunk from that river. We've not drunk that water that makes us thirst no more. That pleasure that you're looking for. And that is why you see many Christians, lights go off, there is no internet. It's the most gloomy day in their home. Yeah. Because they have nothing to do. All they know is on the internet. All they know, they can't live. Now, fasting helps us in some of those things as we give ourselves to the word of God. That your joy is not on those things. Didn't COVID shake men? But why do you think this season has had a lot of depression, anxiety, and what COVID? Because many things that people go to are shaken. And you see, it is healthy for you to have a life. Even people who are married, we talk to them about this. Have a life outside your work, even outside your marriage. Have a life. You get what I mean? Like love a sport. Uh, love, love to race cars, especially when you don't see a cop close by. Love to do, love to do certain things. Praise the Lord. Have, have a life. It is, it is good for your mental health. But let it never substitute God. Because a system is going to come where they're going to say, total lockdown. No driving these kilometers, no football match to watch, bars are closed, uh, no entertainment, no this. What is going to happen? You're going to stay at home and be depressed and die. Yeah? And it happened to many people during this time. Yeah? Because people would be like, yeah, uh, football is how I release stress. 
it is a good thing, but let it not go out of balance. Let God be the one who takes your stress. He says, cast all your cares upon him. Praise the Lord. It is all your cares. It should be him. Because one day, whoever knew that a time would come where no sports is going on around the world? Whoever knew? Whoever knew that NFL would be stopped? So imagine people who could not wait. Every week they have to go for an NFL game for them to be sober. What happened to them? But they that wait upon the Lord, shall, they shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings like eagles. They shall run and not grow weary. They shall walk and not faint. They that wait upon the Lord. Hallelujah. We shall, why mount up on wings as eagles? When the storm has come, when COVID has come, we are happy. Say, oh, there is no football, there is football. There is no movie, there is no movie. Even series, many series were paused during COVID. <laughs> I think people are just there checking their computers every day. When is it coming back? When is it lost time? Imagine during COVID you would have read the Bible five times, cover to cover. So now let that affinity start. And when his reign comes, like we've said, when his anointing comes, his reign will fall on ground where they seed. You'll bear fruit. What has God spoken? You know, I want you to just think about this right now as an individual. What are those things that God has spoken to you? Why haven't they, they, have they come to pass? What are you meant to do? Why isn't it happening? Have you been a joker? Have you been lazy with the word of God? There's a time God spoke to me, I was in college, and God spoke to me and he's like, do you know how far you would be? Hey, that word haunted me the whole semester. Like, you mean I could be far? Yeah? I gave up many meals. I missed more meals than I had. I, as in, I was like, what? I would be far. And as a minister, I was just thinking about it today. God spoke about 2022. Two years ago, what we would see. And today it hit me that it is not obvious. It is possible for 2022 to go. And we've not seen anything that God has been speaking for the last two years. Because we have to cooperate with him. So as you're like, just God, I just have to take in this year. I was even telling my wife yesterday, I'm like, hey, me, I'm not going to read through the Bible at this pace. You, you, you get what I mean? Like, it's okay, guys, if you've never read, do once I are. Praise the Lord. But you know, I, I, I'm aiming for three times I are, cover to cover. I'm aiming for three times I are. Because I'm like, there's a lot at stake. If we are going to see the things that God has called us to see, first of all, as a leader of this ministry, I need to have so much word in me. So much word. But my reflex should be the word of God. You get it? So and so is sick. Be healed in Jesus' name. As in, my reflex should be the word of God. That should be my reflex. Hallelujah. It should be my reflex. It should be my reflex. Whatever is being said, it should, whatever is happening around, my reflex should be the word of God. So I need it so much. So I need him so much. I don't want hands to be laid on me to just become bald like I was telling you yesterday. Let those hands find word in there. I don't want a hand to be laid on me, Bishop Isaiah prophesies to me and uh, I'm the reason those prophecies are not happening. I bear witness in my heart. God is going to open nations to you. God is going to open this to you. This year these things are going to happen. And God looks, there is no foundation and nothing is happening. I don't want to be in that place. I don't want to be the one sabotaging God. Like the ten spies. You see, I told you yesterday that two spies, Joshua and Caleb, they had the word. They had heard what God had said. The others, they had circumstances and situations. They, they spoke reality. You get it? They can say, oh, we were like grasshoppers. Those guys are giants. They, were, they spoke reality. Let the word of God be above reality. Because it is reality. Discipline yourself to read this word of God. Wake up in the morning. Read a chapter. Afternoon, read. You, you know you're not going for lunch break. I mean for lunch, to eat during lunch break. During lunch, read the next chapter. In the evening, read. Let me make sure you're reading those three chapters a day. Eventually, it is going to become sweet. 
you know that children are introduced to sugar. You know that natural human beings are, are not sweet too, so they are not like sweetness in sugar is an acquired taste. But almost all of us love sugar today. But if a child is born and you don't introduce them to sugar, and you see we experimented, we saw that with our baby. We give her porridge with no sugar, she takes you, put sugar, she, like even now, like she's not a, uh, you get what I mean? And I saw there are, there are kids that were, they, they, they somebody, that they had cousins. These cousins are big now, they're in their twenties, and they've never taken sugar in their life. So they tried to taste when they were teenagers in high school, their friends like sweets, they tasted and they're like, it doesn't taste nice. It's an acquired taste. I was told the story of how sugar was introduced in East Africa. Tea leaves were here, and they used to sell tea leaves were expensive. So the Indians brought in sugar. And so you would buy tea leaves, they give you sugar for free. They give you sugar, they say, you try, you try it in your tea. And people start trying it, they start trying it. Then eventually they reduce the portions of sugar that they give. Then one day they're like, ah, now sugar stopped coming. Maybe you may need to pay for it. Then now, sugar is more expensive than tea. They were introduced. People didn't know. So they never used to take it. And I was told that. I took sugar growing up. Actually, I, I, I used to have uh, very little tea in my sugar. Even by the time I, I met my wife. <laughs> yeah, but... <laughs> Recently, I think two years ago, so this person who was telling me, who was selling me, it's an acquired taste. He was telling me because like, I love teas. I love the like, different teas, flav- flavored teas. Yeah? I, I, like, any black teas, like, I, I, I love many teas. So he was telling me, you take them without sugar. He says, at first it may be weird, but as you keep taking, eventually you don't want sugar because you feel like sugar takes away the, the flavor. Even coffee. So people have come to our home and tested my coffee and like, buy mm. but, but you know, I take black coffee with no sugar and I feel, now I can tell, oh, this is AA, this is Java AA, now this is Java, this is Kivu, this is, this is the Rwanda one, this is, you know, you take it without sugar and you can, but you see, to eat, I, you know, I'm a daring person, you get what I mean? I do many things not because I like them, but you see, if somebody has told me it works, so when they told me that the first time I didn't like that coffee, but kept taking it, kept taking it, kept taking it, until now it is what I like. The same thing with tea. I'll take black tea any day without sugar, and I'll take it, I'll take it, I'll take it. Then I realize, actually, I can, I can live without sugar. I love chips. You see, my Kiko, your name is Karaja. Many of you think, <laughs> many of you think it's Kasancha. <laughs> eh? Me, I'm called Karaja. Benjamin. <laughs> Benjamin, Benjamin, yeah, Benjamin, Pasa Beja, Benjamin, Benjamin Karaja. So, I love Waru. You know, I, I just, I see Waru and my, my, my tongue starts doing it. <laughs> huh? Huh? I don't make a lot of Waru. Yeah. I, do, 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 I don't like funny one. Praise the Lord, yeah. Let it not be floating and hitting a tomato and that's that's not the one I'm asking for. Drowning. <laughs> and I'm not talking about that, that drowning. Needs a lifesaver. I'm not a lifesaver for what. <laughs> that <laughs> so so I love I I I love I I, say I love chips, I love fries. And you know, when we when we got married, that's one thing that my wife and hey, she made for me many fries and different potatoes in the oven with uh, rosemary, not the person, the, the real, <laughs> uh, you know, rosemary is a cook, so you may think they made together. That, now, so last year, last year, last year, but one, now going to, to the gym, so I went and I did a body composition test, and when I did a body composition test, I realized my visceral fat was very high. And you see, that's why you see even thin people can have high blood pressure. Actually, many people who think they don't have weight, they think it's not necessary to work out. Yeah. I mean, don't be lied to that cause you. Physical fitness is not for losing weight. Yeah. You'll grow old very fast. Praise the Lord if you think it's about weight. It's not for losing weight. Yes, I realized my visceral fat was very high. 
And as much as I like chips, I told my wife I'm not having any fries. And I think for like three months I didn't have fries. As in that's why I'm saying like I like to discipline myself. I like to go at things that that so try to face some of the things that I had. So you see, and, and when I went back, even the coach was so amazed that my visceral fat had gone way down, like to very healthy, like like as healthy. Actually, by one month already. Because I cut out. I wasn't eating any mandazi. I wasn't eating any junk. Even food that we used to eat here in the office, I stopped eating. Like, because I don't know the cooking oil that is used. and Like, just like just a discipline like that. And I didn't take any soda. I didn't, I didn't take any processed sugar and what. And you see, with visceral fat, you can't work out visceral fat. You just have to discipline your eating. Yeah. So that, 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 that discipline, it's the same thing when it comes to the word of God. I know I'm speaking to somebody, praise the Lord. I know why I have dwelt on this. There is somebody here who doesn't feel like the word of God is exciting to get into. Start it by discipline. Later you will love it. You will feel the flavor that it has. You will feel the aroma that comes from it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Get into the word of God. Get into the word of God. Do you know during every time of prayer and fasting, we take most of the time praying. You remember like even last year, in the beginning, we just come and pray in tongues. Pray in tongues is very little teaching. But this time God emphasized this to me. You know, I was talking with that team when I was telling them and asking me, how is this program going to be? I told them during this time I'm going to teach. We're going to have the word more than we're going to pray. Let people pray at home. Let people pray before they come. Because see, all the other fasts, whenever we come, we come and we just pray in tongues, we pray in tongues. But God told me this very serious. This year, there's going to be a lot of emphasis on the word of God. Because it saddens me to see some of you, especially that some of you are done to prophesy to you. And I see those prophecies have not yet come to pass. You get what I mean? Some of you I don't even know. But you know that you're not where you're meant to be. Because you've wasted time. Yeah. How many hours does it take to watch three movies? About six hours. And you can't have 30 minutes in the world. You get what I mean? And you wonder why you're like, look at some of you. In the last few years, you've become sickly. You are not a sickly person. No sickness started coming to you. Because you lost your love for the world. You realize the more you get in the word, you realize. He says, incline your ear to my words. They are health. And he was talking about your physical body. You just study the word and you're like, wow, I have not fallen sick. The flu season has come. I have not got it. Everyone has it, but I don't have it. This has got, just being in the word of God. Your accuracy in how you hear God. The word is the one that tunes you. You stop making some funny, funny mistakes. There is joy you have. Your relationships are working. You're not fighting all the time because of the word of God. Challenges. And I was telling you that the truth I've seen many times where I have struggled with certain things, habits, what like many of those times when I evaluate myself, I was not giving the word as much priority as I, I, as I should. And I realized that I, I veer off into some funny things and what. So I realized the only way to stay on the narrow and straight is to stay in the word. You stay in the word, you realize that those things can't, you know, you will be shaken, you will be, if you're not in the word, anything will pull your attention, something will pull your attention, something will tell you it is more serious. And on Sunday I was saying that sometimes you're like, so how can I bear this? How can I have the fruit of the spirit? How can I, how can I hear that still small voice? Because the voice outside here seems so loud. Those movies are calling me stronger than the Bible calls me. You get what I mean? I reach home and my computer, my screen, or my Netflix is just saying, you're welcome home, you're welcome home, you're welcome home, you, I missed you, I miss you. You know, you start seeing vision, the TV is off, but you're seeing Netflix, you hear that. You know, you're hearing it, and you're just looking at your TV, and you're just hearing it, doing, you're like, hey... You're welcome, mom. I missed you. I missed you. Your subscription is going to end. You've not utilized me fully. You've not utilized me well. Those are the voices you're hearing. So like, Pastor, how do I silence such voices? By starving whoever is speaking those voices. When you don't feed him, he grows weak. You look at 
that's how some of you can't say hallelujah very strong. Because you've been stabbed, hallelujah. <laughs> you see? <laughs> She's the only one. <laughs> you see, you can't say hallelujah. <laughs> because you're there, you're reserving your energy. You can't wait for that coffee. Hey, pastor, that coffee may be cool. <laughs> and pastor has talked about taking it without sugar. We are not taking it without sugar. No. Take it with, you need sugar for your brain. Take it with sugar. <laughs> Take your coffee with sugar. <laughs> yeah. You know, you're just... So imagine feeling that, like if you when you're weak, when you fast, yeah, you realize that you don't want to talk a lot. You realize that you don't. It is the same thing. That Netflix, that one two three movies, IMAX, Showmax, whatever it is, if you starve it, it is also going to grow weak. You get home and that voice is not as strong as your Bible. You, you get home and you're remembering, well, I didn't finish my Bible reading for today. Let me just go finish those few verses before I shower. Let me go. Let me. And then you start conditioning your dreams. You know how you condition your dreams also? Because you see, your dreams, they, they come from the spirit. Some come from just the soulish realm. They are barely in the soulish realm. Some are in the, they are totally carnal and demonic. Some are demonic. But you see, purpose, that the last thing you see before you sleep is the Bible. And the last thing you, the first thing you see is the Word of God. You start that, you're going to be so amazed at the dreams you're going to be having. You get what I mean? And then you're going to be amazed how you easily remember. You're going to learn to memorize the Word. Because see, the last thing you, you, when you slept, the last thing you read or you listened to as you read, the last thing you are thinking about is normally the first thing you will think about in the morning. So imagine you finish, like tonight, let me say we are reading Job 6, Job 7, and, and John 8. And you see, these portions are very interesting if you read, you know. Job told these guys in chapter 6, you guys, you guys can even sell an orphan to slavery. You know, that was funny, I just read that. And it's true, these guys didn't seem to be Job's friends. The things that Eliphaz is telling Job, look, is this guy Job's friend? And Job is telling them, my friends at least would have pity. These guys are just telling Job hard things. It's like you, you can even sell an offer to slavery. <laughs> you know, they are interesting things. So imagine you read these things. You know, you go home, you read chapter 8 of John. How he's, this lady caught in adultery comes, he lets this lady go. Then he starts telling them, my judgment is right, your judgment is not right, mine is of God and all this. And then you sleep. You're conditioning yourself. You're in, let it be the last thing. And like my wife was saying, put scripture. Get scripture. Write on papers and put a... Yesterday we have a lady who comes to clean our house. So yesterday I was not at home. I, I left earlier. So my wife came here. So I got, I got home because she left her there cleaning. So my wife had put instructions. She writes and puts instruction on the kitchen counter. So I got there. I'm telling you it was a real episode. That paper is bigger than A4. My wife had written there, I, Irene, she's called Irene, eh? Irene, do this, so she had written, you do this, you do this, you do this, Mama Ada. Hey! I said, babe, this is a real episode, it must be to the Galatians. You see, the Galatians, <laughs> as she wrote on her, I'm like, hey, my wife, hey, this one, she can't miss it. If she does any mistake, we can refer back to the episode. This is a very large episode. Paul said, you see with how large letters I write? Now, my wife, yes, I, yeah, then she put her money for paying her there. So how did you take the money and didn't see the instruction? <laughs> yeah, I saw it, I'm like, what? The word is working in my wife. She, even that part of Paul writing with large letters, she's taken it. But you make them write. Some of you have very good handwriting. If you have bad handwriting, you can, call, you can come to some of us. But you see, you write. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is a business idea. Come, let, yeah, people say, let somebody design for you. People who do graphics and what? Agi does graphics. Give a business. Let them do for you and stick. So it says, you go and you brush your teeth. You're brushing your teeth and you're like, I am the righteousness of God. He made him when he was in them. As you go to the bedroom now, you get to the dressing mirror. There is also another one. You say, I'm wonderful and fearfully mad. You know, of course, the mirror may lie to you. <laughs> so you put it there. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Confess the word, not your experience. Praise the Lord. So, so, so make sure that you always put there something that 
uh, the mirror will not discourage you. <laughs> so you, you, know, you just have, it, have scriptures all over your house, read them. You're going to see your health break forth, your life break forth, your prosperity break forth. You're going to live life at a very high level. And that is true because I've told you, you can go and research examples. Uh, preachers and non-preachers, those working in the secular world, those working in the church who have taken the word of God seriously, you will always see them shining. They stand out. They just somehow stand out. Look at Ben Carson. You know, a lot would depress him. Lot, you know, look at, look at all these people. The word just makes somebody stand out. This life it just gives to you. Praise the Lord. And testimonies of even Christians who have gone down. Recently, there was a testimony by Pitson. You know, Pitson sharing how he went through very bad what He was sleeping around and what. Ah, after doing Lingala, I guess, you know, he became famous and all the things he went through. But you know, you're going to realize that all this came. Why? He didn't have time for the world. He was a celebrity. And the truth is that we may laugh at Pitson. All of us are on the same road. Yeah. If we don't take the word seriously, you may not be a celebrity like him, but you're going to go down. And like I told you, you can come to church and pray all the tongues you want. Praise the Lord. You can harmonize from behind there. But you see, <laughs> yeah, your life will not have that harmony. It will be ending here. <laughs> That's the truth. <laughs> yeah. Even like different testimonies that we've had, even no, you remember, even, even Robert Burale. I think many of you had his when I came to Kenya, his testimony was still new how he, whatever he had gone through, pornography, masturbation, and what. But you see, he really he realized I have to get in the word of God, I have to get in and see his life. Robert Burale is not a pastor, you get what I mean? But you can see that he's somebody who is shining, he's not married. You, know, you would think because people think marriage is what will give you. he's living his life, he's not waiting for marriage. He's not waiting for, but he's somebody who has the word. Praise the Lord. You will listen to him and he takes it seriously. He reads his Bible every day. So reading the Bible is not for preachers alone. It is for your life. For your life. You get in that word, you may never need another hand laid on you. You may never run around for another prophecy. Because whoever is prophesying to you, they learned it from the word of God. Whatever impartation you're receiving was learned from the word of God. Hallelujah. Let's bow our heads. Father, thank you for everyone that came today. Thank you for the great things that you're doing in their lives. Let your word bear fruit in their lives. Holy Spirit, let them see you as a teacher. Even for those that are watching, I know some people are watching and it's true. It's been so hard for you to get in the word of God. You start, you read two verses and you feel like it's boring. I want to do it as a discipline. Wake up in the morning, hold that Bible, walk around with it. Get out, wake up very early at five when it is still cold outside. Go there with your phone and start reading and say, Holy Spirit, teach me. I'm going to be disciplined. I don't feel like, it doesn't feel nice, but I know it is necessary. It is like medicine. It is like when you're taking medicine. You don't say it is sweet. You don't say, I like it. You know you have to take it. If you've been told it is three times a day, you need to take it three times a day. If you've been told it is daily for 20 days, you will take it daily for 20 days. That this is how we are going to take the word of God. Holy Spirit, teach everyone the word of God. Teach them. Let them see it at work in their lives. Let them enjoy it. That even as we go on with this year, we will surely see the fruit. We will see the explosion you've spoken about in this ministry. We will see impact going beyond borders because of this word that you have spoken to us. And that when your rain comes, as it keeps coming, that it will come on soil that already has seed in it. Thank you, Father. Yeah, let's get up on our feet and let's let's raise our hands. I want to speak this prayer over you. I want to receive this. I want you to say amen to it as you receive it, yeah? The Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Peace that's from above. As your pastor, I bless you with this. May you reach the purpose for which you were created. May you have courage above your peers. 
and have more passion for the things of God than others think is necessary. May you dream more than others think is practical. May you expect more than others think is possible. May you choose wisely without earthly bias. You have people to influence that you haven't met yet. You have lives to change that are waiting for your arrival. You're strategically placed wherever God takes you by his grand design, just so you can be everything he made you to be. The place, that place is the place you can grow best and can be most fruitful. The future is changed because of your presence. May you see God in every detail of his creation because it was all designed by him. May you bless your children and may they become giants of faith. Under the mighty hand of God, you are made by God to be here for such a time as this. You are blessed.